is my soul troubled? And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. This is from John 12, verses 27 and 28. And this is Jesus speaking. This is shortly before Jesus is crucified. And these were his words. He was greatly troubled. So it is, it is as if Jesus is speaking out of a battle within him. His soul was troubled due to what lied ahead. And it is just natural if we consider what was lying ahead for him and unlike us, he knew what really lied ahead. Because he knew that he would be nailed to the cross and he would be mistreated and tortured and abused um, before that. Um, and then obviously the cross is, yeah, it's the, mo the, the cruelest thing you could ever imagine. So it was just natural to be troubled and to say, um, what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. It's natural to be troubled and to want to avoid it. But Jesus was not only fully human. He also was fully God. And therefore he reminds his human fears in the fact that the cross is the very reason he came to earth. All his life, works and words wouldn't have been, uh, would have been a complete waste and would have been in vain and all scripture in fact would have been a total lie if he wouldn't endure the cross, if he would go and he would have had the power to say, I'm not going to do it. The destiny of all the world led on his shoulders. And he alone had the power to make a way. He alone had the keys to unlock heaven's doors for you and me. The purpose is God's glory. Because Jesus says it here. But for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. The purpose is God's glory. So where would God's glory be if scripture would not be fulfilled? If it would turn out that God's word is not trustworthy? Where would his glory be if all his words turned out to be lies? I don't, I don't, I don't want to even think further on that. It, it, it's absolutely horrible. It would be so completely hopeless for us. Really, all hope would be lost if Jesus hadn't gone to the cross, if Easter hadn't happened. There, was, there, there would be absolutely no hope for us. And Jesus knew that better than anyone else. Hence, he asked for the Father's will to be done and to glorify his name. Jesus seemed to wrestle in sight comparable to the wrestlers in the Garden of Gethsemane. We see that in Luke, for example, we see that in Luke 22, verses 41 to 43. Here Jesus faces his soon arriving arrest and betrayal and obviously everything that follows after. And he asks the Lord to prevent this to happen, but prays ultimately for God's will to be done. It's only human to wrestle when facing hardship. And it's very human to ask the Lord to prevent it from happening. And it's okay to pray that. But we have to come back to God's glory, God's work and eternity. That has to be our focus. We can't stop by praying, Lord, protect us. Lord, prevent this from happening. But ultimately, we also have to pray, your will be done. Because his will is best for us. And this is what Jesus did. He put God's glory, God's work, and eternity on the first place. It's also good to know that when we serve him, we'll be honored for it. And we see that in John 12, verse 26. And as soon as Jesus makes that willful choice, 
Despite the fears and the distress inside, to put God first, a heavenly reaction comes. We see here, then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. And in the Garden of Gethsemane we see that an angel came to strengthen Jesus. It's amazing, God spoke from heaven, confirming that his good plan will come through. And in Luke, yes, as I said, the angel came to strengthen the Lord. Isn't that amazing? A heavenly response? God's immediate response and help, absolutely amazing. So the key is that God was listening. And he sees the trouble all the time. Because he responded. And there's great comfort in knowing that God knows, that he sees, that he hears, and that he is active. Now his response might not always be what we want, but it's always what is best for us. And in John we see that all this happened and the people even heard God's voice. Um, and that's absolutely amazing. So it even affected people around Jesus. And isn't it amazing that Jesus opens his heart and shares his deepest thoughts here. And his heart, he shares his troubles. He isn't pretending that he doesn't have any trouble. Isn't it amazing how he displays the victory over human feelings by putting God first. And isn't it great that God openly and publicly reacted and confirmed? Now, this don't expect to hear a voice from heaven, um, but da God does respond, and He does it nowadays. Um, as I said, the response might not be in the time we want it to be, and it might not be in the manner we expected it to be, but He will respond. And honestly, it will be for our best. Even if we can't see that in this life, it will be for our best. So let us always put God's glory first, even if we don't feel like it. And let us never lose sight of eternity and of the big picture. And let us not follow our hearts, but follow the truth. Because our hearts are deceitful and they often, they, they often lead us away completely. If Jesus had followed his heart, we wouldn't have a way for salvation nowadays. But Jesus followed the truth and therefore Easter happened and we have a way to eternal life and to salvation. Jesus is the only way. There is no other way.